Steve, ukulele did just get delayed, but the latest trailer came out and got everyone excited, including myself. What can we expect from the game? Oh, just massive colourful worlds, a cast of wonderfully zany characters, yep. great gameplay mechanics, witty dialogue. That's it, yeah. Yep. Just, just great stuff. A lot of the stuff you're known for making in the past. How hard is it actually designing a duo that works? Uh, I think it's just something that comes naturally. So I chose a chameleon because they're just cool creatures with loads of cool natural abilities that yeah. we can take and gamify like instead of um, chameleon just camouflaging, he can take on physical properties so he can lick uh, metal and become heavy, he can lick fire or electric and become charged or fiery and then you've got the bat on top of that with all the, uh, the cool sonar moves around that and put the two together and all the different projectiles, there's lots of different combinations there of moves. Yeah. Are there any failed pairings on the cutting room floor? You guys can talk about <laughs> in the chameleon, were there um, any it, that you went this well, isn't going to work? No, it happened pretty quickly which it had to do because when we started you know we didn't have many resources, not much cash, just a few people so we, we had to get the characters right straight away and there was um, there was a, a tiger a sketch of a tiger right. but um, he never got further than a sketch and we thought he was too heroic he was like quite broad-shouldered and we thought in traditionally we've done um, underdog characters in yeah. games like this so we thought that was a good fit so there's a tiger I think I I did a really quick sketch of a, a frog but that went nowhere but that was obviously getting closer yeah. to what became the chameleon in terms of Laylee it, was, it always had to fly, mm. it couldn't be a bird because of our past, so the other one on the cards is maybe an insect, but characterised insects, they're not my favourite, yeah. so after that the, the best fit was a, a bat and it's, it's turned out great. I love that that's just your thought process, it sounds like you were sitting at a pub like going, no, can't use insect, can't use that, alright, we've got it, well, it well, normally no, sounded there, effortless. There, there, it was pretty much like that, but there was no beer involved unfortunately. No, so. fair enough. <laughs> The genre itself, it seems to be resonating with a lot of people. Why do you think the 3D platformer is so timeless? They, 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 they usually just put a smile on your face. I mean, yeah. they, they don't like tend to polarise opinion like games with guns. They're just, they, they really can be games for everyone. And that is always something we try to do. Also, a big part of these games is the supporting cast around them. All those little side characters have always been really quirky and really charming, and games like Banjo-Kazooie, I've always loved finding those little ones around the world. Do they play a big part in this game as well? Oh, absolutely, yeah. We've got a great cast of characters. Our, our character team back at Playtonic, and we've got Mark Stevenson, who worked on a lot of the DK games and Cameo, and recently joined us. We've tempted him back after 10 years out of the industry. He's, he's Kev Bayliss, wow. who's a great character guy. He, he designed the Battle Toads and the Killer Instinct characters, so he's, he's He's there now at Playton, he's just churning out these wonderful characters, so Fantastic. you're going to be very pleased when you see him. Amazing, and there's a lot of pedigree there. Is there, yeah. is there a trick to creating memorable characters like this? Is there something that you guys have really worked out as a formula? Well, maybe there is, but it's just something that comes naturally, because we're going back like 20 odd years now, and we've been doing it for so long, mm. it's just something we naturally do. If we had to tackle another genre, you know, maybe we wouldn't be as strong, but for this genre in particular, yeah. it's, it's a great fit. So Steve, I've been a massive fan of your work for a long time and one of my favourite characters was Dixie Kong. Uh, can you tell me some story behind the development there? Something uh, just an exclusive yeah, for me? Yeah, I can actually, yeah. So the first attempt for a Dixie Kong, it literally just looked like Diddy with um, a wig on, so it looked like Diddy in drag. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, what's going on here? So, um, so I, I, I got I, a bit of that from Candy Kong. Yeah, yeah, so, oh, yeah Candy Kong, she was dreadful. <laughs> that's probably the worst character I've ever done. Really? Really? Okay, yeah. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Well, I, I disowned. Candy Kong. So Dix is another one of those examples where often with game development it's happy accidents. So yeah. I just I did a massive ponytail on her and then that became a really cool gameplay feature. So she picks barrels up with it, she can do like the, um, the, the helicopter, glide, the glide move, yep. and it became a weapon. All from just oh she's got a ponytail. Now you know it, it gives the designers um, a catalyst. They can look at the design and, and design um, features around that. Can I just say you make it sound way too effortless. It's sort of like you've designed something you've gone to all this work and you're just like oh I just drew a pigtail on her and suddenly no. it was this amazing well, it's, character. It's always a team effort so I do yeah. that and then it's up to anybody else to run with it and see the potential in sure. that. Oh we can do this instead and all of a sudden Dixie is people's favourite character just because she controls so differently yeah. to the others. So. Oh, well, Again thank you so much for the memories oh, and no I'm problem. really looking forward to playing this one as well. Great, thanks for the time.